Hi everyone! In this video we are going to look at Natasha Denona's new limited edition Metropolis eyeshadow palette. This is a palette that is currently available exclusively at Sephora. Make sure to check the description box to a link to exactly where you can find it to purchase if you're interested, as well as a link to Ebate so that if you are shopping online you're at least getting cash back on all the orders that you make. So if you're interested in this brand new Natasha Denona palette to see swatches and what I think about the formula and my first impressions, then this is the video for you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow Allura Beauty on Instagram, and if you haven't checked out the latest video, it is for Benefit's two new highlighters, which I was presently surprised by. It's been a long time since something from Benefit has impressed me, so if you looked these over and kind of just passed over them, you might want to give that video a look because you too may also be pleasantly surprised by those two new highlighters that they've released. All right, let's get looking at and swatching Natasha Denona's new Metropolis eyeshadow palette. So as I stated, it is currently available through Sephora online and it retails for $129. If you're familiar at all with Natasha Denona, you probably aren't surprised by that pretty penny of a price point. If you'd prefer to purchase this in stores, it will be available on September 26th. This is a 28 pan eyeshadow palette. All 28 shades are new, and the palette also includes two new formulas of pressed pigment eyeshadows. The claims by Natasha Denona are that these extraordinarily rich pressed pigment shadows deliver maximum color payoff. They're hydrating and smooth for optimum texture and comfortable all day wear. And in terms of use, there's nothing funky or special about the directions that Natasha Denona gives on how to apply these. They say use a fluffy eyeshadow brush for blending and a detail brush for precise application. For the metallic duochrome and chroma crystal eyeshadows, it suggests that you apply them with a dense eyeshadow brush for a subtle finish, or if you want a higher payoff, to use the color foiled meaning applying it with a damp brush or even with your fingers. So here's a look at the actual packaging. It's in this kind of soft case, semi-soft case. The color is a subtly sparkly kind of dark hunterish green. And then of course you have the logo or the name of the brand and the Metropolis palette name embossed on the front. The palette is actually pretty compact for uh, how many shades there are in there, so it's a little larger than the size of my hand. The palette closes or stays closed via a couple of magnets, and you open up, you get a fair-sized mirror in the lid. You also get this plastic overlay that gives you the names of each shade. This is removable, so if you don't like that getting in the way, if it bugs you, you can tear this off and remove it. But if you do that, you do not have anywhere else that tells you pan by pan what the colors are, unless you save the box and the box on the back has the list of names. So here are what the eyeshadows look like up close, as I do in every single one of my swatch videos for pressed powder shadows. I will swatch these over a layer of eyeshadow primer, and I will use a dense flat eyeshadow brush from Sigma to do the swatches themselves. So first to swatch is the shade Rust. This is a metallic, vibrant, rustic sienna. Shade number two is Troop. This is a matte, dark, army green. It's very creamy in formula. Shade three is Orium. This is a duochrome shade. It's It says it's a coral with light greenish reflex, which is a very interesting description. I don't know that under this particular light that I have, an angle that I see, uh, maybe actually in certain lights I can see kind of like a pinkish tone. I don't know if I would really say I can see a coral tone. It's a really beautiful shade nonetheless. Shade 4 is Shield. This is a metallic olive green. 5 is Shade Ripe. This is a matte coral terracotta. 
Shade 6 is Satin. This is a matte, dirty apricot. Again, you might not be able to see it on the camera, but as I'm laying this down with the brush, you can tell visually this is almost like a cream formula, even though it's a powder. Shade 7 is Mace. This is a metallic copper nude. I would call this more of a bronze as opposed to a copper. Shade number eight is Rope. This is a matte warm beige. Shade nine is Fuse. And this is a rustic gold with a high shine finish. Shade 10 is Lethal. This is a matte avocado green. Oh, that's weird. This one went on super streaky. Again, seems to have that cream texture to it. I did think that when I was picking it up on the brush, it seemed to pick up a little bit splotchily. Let's see if it improves with the second layer. I'm using a little bit more of a dabbing motion. Let's see how well this smooths out. Oh, it smooths out really nicely. Shade number 11 is Penny. This is a bronze with a high shine finish. These are the kinds of shades that would probably look, work really well with a dampened brush. 12 is Chrism. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is a matte peach shade, again with that very buttery, creamy matte formula. 13 is Aqueous. And this is a vibrant, wow, metallic aqua blue. And 14 is Queen. And this is a metallic pearly pink champagne. Okay, so there's the first half of the palette, the first two rows. Let's take a close-up look here. That creamy buttery formula on the mattes is really wonderful. Um, remember this avocado shade we did do two layers? I'm thinking might have been just an error in picking up the formula on that first layer, but you get really smooth pigmentation, really vibrant metallic shimmering shades. Overall, pretty impressed so far. Shade 15 is Blaze. This is a champagne gold with a high shine finish. Number 16 is Noble. This is a metallic taupe. 17 is Imperia. And this is a metallic brassy gold. Shade 18 is Royal. This is a matte dark forest green. Okay, we're getting a little bit of a similarity with this one and avocado. So there is a bit of streakiness on that first lay down and I'm confident I picked up enough product. So let's put a second layer on, smooth this puppy out. Yeah, it goes really smooth, but it may take a little bit of dabbing and layering. Number 19 is Crest. And this is a metallic rosy coral. 20 is Enigma. And this is a matte midnight blue. Same kind of formula, it's a little streaky. And for a little more product, layering that on top. It's almost like paint, the way that it moves. 21 is pure. And this is a matte brown old rose. 22 is azoic, not sure. And this is a matte mustard taupe brown. Beautiful creamy formula on that one. 23 is Jubilee, and this is a metallic vibrant teal. 
24 is Symbol. This is a matte, deep teal. Again, streaky at first. Add a layer, smooth that out. Really interested to see how these blend with a fluffy brush. 25 Rhizome. And this is a matte, warm mustard. This one has a more traditional powdery feel to it. 26 is Claret. Claret? I think it's Claret. And this is a metallic rosy fuchsia. 27, Helena. This is a shimmery light apricot with, it says, pink reflex. And 28 is Antique. And this is a matte dark pink brown. All right, so there is the second half, bottom two rows of the palette. We got a lot of those creamy matte shades. Again, I'm gonna experiment with application and let you know, but at least with some layering, all of them again, great pigmentation, very vibrant and strong color on these. And just to experiment with some different applications, let's do some of these shades with foiling methods and application with the fingers. So I'm gonna start with this duochrome shade, Orium. I've spritzed down the brush with a mixing medium and it goes on super liquidy and metallic. Let's put that next to a finger swatch. You can see a little more sheer in color, but still really pretty. So with that foiled method, you get a much more intense dense layer and a more uh, intense shine. Let's do one of these quote unquote high shine formulas. This one here is, I believe, Penny. So again, with a dampened brush, see that you get that more liquid finish and feel. And finger application. Pretty similar, actually. And I actually want to try swatching one of the matte, those creamy matte shades, with my finger to see if we get something smoother and whether it's actually practical to do it this way. So this shade is Symbol. Yeah, so it is smoother. It's a bit more of a wash of a color, so you may not want that. But it's interesting to see how it applies. So there you go with the different application of different shimmering shades and a matte shade. Oh, and one thing I did notice is a lot of those deeper matte creamy shades do leave behind a little bit of a stain. I'm assuming because they have more of like a liquid texture to them, so they're sinking into the skin more than just a pure powder would, which would more sit on top of the skin. I, I don't think it should cause too much really deep staining, but just be aware. Okay, so there you have the swatches of the 28 shades from the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I would say my initial impressions are positive because all of the shades have great pigmentation. They have a very nice formula that goes on boldly. And of course you have some of those mattes that are streaky, but if you work with them and layer them, they become even more intense and very smooth. And I am attracted and intrigued by the very buttery, creamy, almost paint-like quality that these mattes have in here. I don't know that I've really seen that kind of matte before in any other palette or with any other brand. I can see how that may make it a little more difficult to do a buffing motion with a fluffy, less dense brush. So what I will be doing is I will be playing with this palette, doing some eye looks, in my upcoming video, it's probably gonna be the next one published after this one, the monthly What's New in Beauty video. I will put an eye look on and show you and wear that eye look throughout that video. And of course, I'll give you an updated review on what I think of the formula after actually using it on multiple looks. But for now, I can say I really like the color story in this palette. Um, and I like a lot of the individual shades. 
Of course, the price point is so hefty. $129 is a lot to ask. And ultimately, whether it's worth it or not is going to be more up to personal preference as opposed to quality. Even assuming this is an across the board fantastic palette, which I'm not saying that yet because I want to test it out. But even if that ends up being my opinion, still $129 just may not be worth it. Uh, there are tons of other more affordable brands where the quality is great. And practically speaking, once you put the shades on your eyes, most of the time you can't tell if something is just a little bit more superior in formulation than a palette that is literally half or even a quarter of this price. So let me know in the comment section what thoughts you have on this palette, the price point, the colors, the color story, any other thoughts that you have. I'd be very interested to know. I hope this video was helpful to you if you were curious about how the colors look like once swatched. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next video.